Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I did notice that there are a few new subscribers, and I want to thank you for joining me on my plant hobby growing journey. Thanks again for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Today, we're going to focus on the Vandas in pots. This is somewhat of a two to four year update. Some of these Vandas have been in pots for about four years straight, some for about two. I did grow them bare root when I was growing inside my house um, about four years ago. But <laughs> as I have said before, I actually grow in zone six, Ohio, and the humidity levels can be very low here which hasn't worked out well for me um, and the Vanda roots. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how Vandas respond to being potted and what medium I use. Here is Vanda Colmari. This is a Gigantia cross. Uh, let me see, I actually got this one from Moats Orchids. I uh, got it in, whoa, 2016. <laughs> And she has really been potted since 2016, actually. I always had to pot this one because it actually does beautiful root production in a pot. And I use basket liner, basically, as their potting medium and nothing else in hers. This year, she has bloomed. She took um, about a year off from blooming because I had them in my basement last year and they hated it. Anyway, look at these rich, velvety, wine-colored flowers and the fragrance permeates the entire greenhouse. The scent travels about six feet, no lie, maybe more. If you get your hands on this one, I guarantee you, you will really enjoy the fragrance on it. It's an excellent banda for those who are fragrance lovers. Now. It's not that great on space. <laughs> the leaf span, the leaf span on my Vanda is about uh, 24 inches. Now this entire top row up here has not been watered. I'm gonna show you, and this should actually be a great testament as to why I pot them. My humidity in the greenhouse right now is at 25%. I watered yesterday, and because I somewhat get a little bit nervous about crown rot in my fowls, I let the humidity drop to make sure all the water kind of dries out of their crowns if any gets in there. So I'm going to continue wat watering today. Look at these roots in this pot. None are desiccated. This is Vanda um, Lamellata Boxali Var Remediosa. Going from memory here because I lost the tag, but I know exactly what it is. This year she has, can I see the spikes? Two spikes. Do you see these roots? No wrinkling at all. And it is water once a week. Potted also in that core, coconut core basket liner. Here we have Vanda Kalihi Beauty in full bloom. See how many flowers? It smells so good. Now, despite this being a cross of um, Lamellata Var Remiliosa and um, Tessalata, I would say it looks very much like Lamellata. <laughs> if not, it could be the same tree, the same plant. But um, this is also a plant I got from Moat's Orchid. <gasps> and now I didn't just take the tag out. Oh, no. Go right back in. I cannot have my tags be lost. This is absolute sacrilege. Here we go. Let me stick her back in there for now. Oh, the fragrance. Oh, this one. Whereas uh, Colmari is very rich wine scented, this one is more fruity, uh, which is probably from the Tessalata. Um, it's, I can hardly smell anything except Colmari, but yeah, this one smells pretty great itself. So um, now here is a Vanda, a Vandacious type. This one is, um, uh, well, you know, I never remember the name of this one. Yeah, it's a Neofinertia falcata cross Holco Glossum Armigianum. 
this year she has given me two spikes one two oh, that I can see and again let's get close into the roots now this one is potted in lava rock as you can see there's no root desiccation at all so you can see a theme here vandas can work perfectly in pots but perhaps it might be the environment that they're in my environment is quite dry in fact see this <laughs> that's 29 percent humidity it's 77 in here the average humidity 23 to 63 high dry as a bone anyway um let's look at the roots again this one is one of my favorites new Fenetia falcata across vanda denisoniana it was in bloom recently about two videos back close up on the roots this one is potted in pool noodles. Um, I cut them up, I stick them in the pot, and I also added a little bit of the coconut core basket, um, basket liner. Now this one was a little struggly bus one. This was Vanda Batram. It got very sick after arriving, but it, its root system wasn't that great, but over the summer it grew a ton of roots. And as you can see, it grew its roots into the Vanda, I mean, into the coconut core. It's not in bloom, but Batram needs to be a lot bigger than this to bloom. Now here is my, um, who were you, Marillia? Crossed ocean storm. Let's check. I'm going from memory. Yep. But really, I crossed ocean storm. She just dried her spike. And look, two new spikes. Isn't that great? Most importantly, look at these thick roots. Again, I must repeat, the plants are dry. These have not been watered for a week. And I do need to water them. But because they're potted, I, I can get away with a whole lot. Ah, this leaf is about to die. I'm not gonna do anything to it. I'll let it fall naturally. I like to use, see this is kind of that pool noodle um, material again, and the coconut core. Here is a baby, this is a very young um, Banda Tricolor Suavis. This one will need to be a lot bigger to bloom. I mean, it's big now, but not bloom ready. It also had really bad roots when it arrived, but it has great roots now. Over here will be my first time bloomer. Uh, oh, I might need to move this one to show you this. Wait. This is Banda Plowin Pit Prize. Let's look at the roots again. Note, no desiccation, no wrinkling at all. Now I hate when the roots kind of stick to the um, clay pot. This is a big pot, it's about eight inches. And for the first time, we have a spike that's down in there. Oh, can I even show it on the video? Is it in the frame? Yeah, there it is. Okay. So I'm excited about that. Uh, also in coconut core. Uh, <laughs> this is a band that my friend and I fondly called bastard. <laughs> this is, um, you know, I call it bastard so much. I forgot its real name. How rude. Uh, something about flowers. What was the name of this plant? Good grief. This is why you should not use nicknames and you should use real names. Her name is Arades Multiflora, which I no longer see on the market. It has a beautiful cascading pink bloom. She also refused to bloom last, last year when she was in the um, basement. And you know what? I agree. It's okay, girl. It was dark, okay? She's not in spike yet, but I'm hopeful that she'll spike this year. And her baby has grown large. This one is potted in lava rock completely. They can tolerate... Wrinkle Stylus Gigantia and the Arades can tolerate lava rock in a drier environment very easily. I have always had success potting them. Pool noodles and um, the coconut core is what I'm using here in this. I, looking at the shape of it, it 
Who are you again? I don't even look at my baby ones because they don't bloom. Mimi Palmer cross tessellata. So yeah, she, this one is a baby. It hasn't bloomed, but we're focusing on the root help. And as you can see, no wrinkling, no desiccation. Absolutely happy. So if you're considering potting your Vandas, yeah, definitely give this a try. The babies will um, appreciate it and the adult ones will appreciate it. Thanks for watching guys and I hope you're having a great day. I hope you got some helpful tips about growing your Vandas in pots. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Goodbye.